Hey there guys, Fazzy here aka Syndromes, and welcome to this little video. So it's finally happened. One of the last teasers to come from the Avorian dev team told us that Avorian 2.0 is pretty much on the horizon, and seeing as though I've taken a good break from the game and I'm itching to make more videos about it, and so I was thinking to myself, what exactly can I cover as like a sort of in-between video or two before the release of the new version? There is something to be said about addressing the topic of mods, which is a fairly frequent type of comment and suggestion to my videos, but I'm still not really sure how to deal with Avorian mods, because it's not the same as, say, for something like RimWorld. They exist, and there is a very big bunch of them, but apart from something like Savorian mod, which by the way is something that I'm still trying to get my head around, uh, most of these mods are generally slight modifications of already existing mechanics, so for example, the removal of the 50% damage cut for automated turrets, or uh, say, something like increasing the amount of turrets a turret control system give you. They are not really suited for a separate Let's Play, but no, I will do mods at some point, just not now. As you can already guess by the topic of today's video, I wanted to instead talk about one of the more prominent features that makes Avorian so fun, which is the designing and progression of your ships over the course of the play. And after having gone back to some of my older videos for inspiration, I'm glad to say that my overall mannerisms when it comes to creating my ships have changed quite a bit. Now, I will never say that my ships are amazingly good to look at, or that I'm designing them in one very good way. If anything, it took me until very recently to figure out that, oh wait, there is actually a finite amount of fighters I should account my ships for, and I really don't need these huge hangar bays. But at the same time, I do believe that I've gotten to the point where I'm at least comfortable looking at my ships and how I make them, and the exact specifics are certainly a lot different from what they were before. If anything, these days, due to the way that I make my ships, they all end up fitting a certain style which kind of develops over the course of a playthrough, and at the same time, it's not really just my tastes. Every single time, because of the way I make these ships now, have their own distinct feel and are kind of attributed to their own, quote, shipline. And perhaps this might work even as a sort of a tutorial, or at least a source of inspiration for people getting into the game. Who knows? Now, back when I started playing Avorian, and mind you, it wasn't during the first beginnings of the game's life, my method of making ships was remarkably simple. I would start with a small, compact ship and just keep adding to it as the game progressed. Whenever I had the materials for it, I would just add them to the ship itself. It would lead to moments where I would either run out of energy, and then I would have to add more generators, and then suddenly I don't, I didn't have enough crew members, and stuff like that. Now, these days, uh, I use what I would call a modular design, in the sense that at some point in, in the playthrough, I just sit down and create some prefab parts of these ships, and then I kind of use a certain guideline, finger quotes, spine, to distribute them. You will see exactly what I mean in just a moment, but the biggest change is that I don't consistently approve upon a ship. I make it so that it's fully functional for its current size and its current location, but the next time I even touch on a ship, I pretty much completely redesign it, as in, I take note of how much my current ship costs and what kind of stats it has, and I only improve the ship when there is a tangible reason to increase it, like making sure that it gains another slot point, or maybe it uh, introduces shields, etc, etc. Alright, ladies and gents, let's make a shippy. But first of all, about the whole spine thing. So, you know how in drawing things you kind of make a rough sketch of what you want to draw and then use it as a uh, guideline of sorts? Well then, yeah, that's basically the purpose of the spine of the ship. All it really does, it just defines a very rough shape of the ship itself, and I usually build it out of armor. The secondary purpose of it is to add a base hit point pool. It usually allows me to figure out how big I want to make the ship, with the idea that once I'm done laying down the armor, I will have around a third of the hit point pool of the finished product, so 
In this case, let's say I want to create a ship that is somewhere around a million hit points. So in other words, we're going to make the ship's quote skeleton or spine to be roughly 300,000 hit points. Since this one-ish million hit point count is normal for ships somewhere around the Trinium or Xenium sectors, we're going to be focusing on those materials. Alright, so this is going to be our ship's overall shape. You'll notice that I put these blocks in seemingly at random, and you're not necessarily wrong. At this point in time, I have no clue how this ship is going to look, so this is a unprecise science at best. But we are going to just use this uh, sort of skeleton to start adding all the blocks to. Now then, the purpose of why you want to create these sort of pre-designed fabs is twofold. Uh, first of all, it allows you to make ships modular and easier to create and faster create, and it also allows you to adhere to a certain visual theme if you want. And secondly, it also allows you to impart some sort of decorative elements to them on the get-go. Though, as you'll see in a moment, I have two parts that is just for the sake of armor and decoration for that exact purpose. Also, the way that you create these modular parts means that you can also integrate armor in them and also integrity field presence so that you don't have to worry about those blocks and their coverage later. So, with that in mind, the first two parts that we're going to create are engines and control surfaces. So, when it comes to ship design, I tend to put these two items at the front at the back of my ship only after I've designed all the rest of it. And apart from the visual design, these modules will contain the following things. So you have the engines, duh, you have the inertia dampeners, you have the integrity field generators, uh, directional thrusters, and all of that you're just going to clad in armor. I've had a lot of time to fly my ships around, and so the overall idea when you make these uh, engine modules is kind of simple. Once you've completed the module itself, the engine module should have equal parts acceleration and deceleration. Or, to be more precise, it needs to stop as fast as it goes. The reason for this is very simple. I feel a ship is comfortable to fly only once its deceleration is as close to acceleration as possible, so it doesn't feel like a brick. While it's important to make sure that the engine component has good stats, it also has to look good. The behind of your ship is what you tend to stare at at the most, so you might as well give her an ass worth staring at. The way that I do this is very simple, in that I create a separate, quote, shroud that goes on at the end of the ship. It can be resized to whatever the shape of the engine it needs to be, and it usually also features a glow block, so I can color the engine whatever I want, all the other parts about it are purely decorative, but it also has an inbuilt integrity field just to provide more cover. Now, in retrospect, this sort of, quote, cross shape engine module was a bit of a bad choice simply because of the way that scaling works at times, and the presence of this kind of L shaped bend will necessitate me to use more of the, quote, filler armor modules later on in the existing design. But now, Let's move on to the second module, which I tend to call a control surface module. In order to make it, I will simply remove the shroud from the already existing engine module, and then I will replace all the engine and inertia dampener blocks with directional thrusters. All this part needs to do is to go either on the front or the sides of the finished ship in order to provide rotation, pitch, yaw. It's very simple, and there's no real need to further elaborate about it. The next module we're going to create is the Reactor Core, and I've always found it kind of amusing that ever since I started playing Avorian, ship power generation battery size has always been a rather finicky subject for me. But in the end, I've settled down for a simple enough goal for all of my ships. So first of all, I fine-tune the amount of power generation only after I have all of the gubbins installed, and the goal is kind of simple. A ship should always consume a fifth of its total power output when idle, and secondly, the amount of reserve battery power should always be ten times of the usual power. So again, as with most things about my ship that has nothing to do with math, a ship with these sort of numbers just feels fine to use. So the first part is easy enough to satisfy by adding more of these power core modules to the ship design, 
But the second part is also remarkably easy to do, simply because that if you add two equally large blocks, one a generator and the other one a energy container, then yeah, that the container usually holds 10 parts to what the generator puts out. As for the design of the module itself, that's also pretty straightforward. I usually put two blocks side by side, clad it in uh, integrity fields, and then just cover it in armor. A few more interesting visual designs can also be added like I'm doing now, but that's about it. One more module down, a few more to go. As I'm recording this after the fact, this next module ended up not featured in the best of ways in the end, but when it comes to industrial ships such as traders or mining ships, I do love my cargo pods, so here you are. This module follows really the same idea as all the others. You just have your visual decorations in the form of a torpedo storage block providing us with that industrial stripe texture, and you also have built-in integrity fields. The only real thing to note here is that it is meant to be connected to other pods, so you will see these sort of stems coming out the side, so you can easily daisy chain them. But apart from that, nothing really more to add about here, so let's move on. There are a few other things we could make. I tend to like making separate shield generators as well, but I thought that this video might be a little bit too long anyway, so let us skip to the two of the more specific non-system modules. You'll notice that what we created here so far are variations of blocks, as in they have flat surfaces. This means that once we start making the ship and placing them down, there will be two issues we will face in terms of its visual design. One, we will, as already said, have a lot of flat, bare surfaces, and also we will have a lot of L-shaped gaps. Both of these can be remedied by filling them in with plate armor, and for the most part, we will only need two shapes. The first one will be a triangle shape that will help us fill in any angled surfaces, and, in order to do that, we must start off with a base which we'll be using to provide spacing between it and the main hull. Now, the reason for this is that we might need to use a single armor module to uh, cover different other modules. And they are very rarely on the same plane, and by that I mean that one block can be higher than the other, so having this sort of spacer not only allows uh, us to integrate a and you guessed it, Integrity Field Generator, but it also will make sure that by placing this module on the lower of the two blocks, you can still cover them both at the same time. The only other thing to do here is to add a few decorative elements, and I must admit that looking at this footage later, I should have realized at the time that the game doesn't really like you putting things on slanted surfaces that much, and so the shading engine doesn't really know what to do with this. It looks a little bit strange, but there we go, it could have been worse. And if anything, this will prove a certain point later down the video. Now comes the second type of armor plating, which is meant to cover the flat surfaces. It really is what it says on the tin. When we're going to be placing down all of these prefab modules around the skeleton of the ship, we will end up with a lot of bare, boring, flat surfaces. The point of this armor plate is to provide additional protection, duh, but it's also meant to be visually stimulating. The irony in that statement is that once I created this first one, I had to actually go back and create a simplified one without the torpedo storage texture simply because it was a little bit too convoluted. And again, the whole point of this thing is to add texture and depth to the ship where there would otherwise be none. And since, as usual, I also add integrity field generators to it, it will provide extra coverage. The last point here is the crew bridge, and I'll be honest with you, I usually build this myself, even on module-based ships. To this date, I've not found a good copy-pasteable bridge that looks okay on all the various ships that I can build from this. But I think that this one right here is a serviceable one. I, it's slightly under-detailed, and the only thing you need to know about it is that the two flat surfaces behind it and underneath it are the ones that you're supposed to connect to the rest of the ship. Alright then, ladies and gents, we have all of our parts, and now it's time to create the ship itself. As already mentioned before, the fun of Avorian is to slowly design and build your own ship as you progress through the game. 
from what I've been showing you thus far, you might think to yourself that the module-based ships seem to be a rather lazy thing to do, and it kind of defeats the whole purpose of this sort of engagement. But the truth of the matter is that, first of all, not everyone is proficient with the editor, nor does everyone want to slave over their own ship designs. This sort of module-based creation makes things a lot more easier for them, and with much better results than trying to use the in-game shipyards for their procedurally generated ships. Secondly, while I use this building technique, you must understand that I still enjoy tinkering with my own ship. If I wanted to make a ship for, say, mining or defense, a ship that I will only interact with using the map at best, I will use this module design. If I'm working on my flagship, however, I'll be much more thorough and direct with certain things and use the modules only sparingly, usually in the form of the armor parts, and even then I would usually modify them myself a little bit more. There is one thing to be said about the creation of these ships using the modules, though. I found out that as long as you make these modules themselves visually interesting, there is physically no way to make an ugly ship with them. Notice that I put very little thought in how I place my armor plating sections. I mostly make sure that the ship's power core is adequate and that its uh, overall movement and handling is to my liking, and everything else is just visuals. This is the sort of ship that I would throw together in about 15 minutes and let it guard my mining ship, or, I don't know, make a additional miners, or a salvager, or whatever, and every single one can be its own unique design without having to copy page ships while following certain visual similarity with other ships so that they can be of the same, quote, ship line. And, well, there you have it, ladies and gents. A shippy. A one million hull, 400,000 shield ship with 9 slots, and a rather industrial-ish visual design. All of the components are protected from railguns due to a multitude of different armor layers, one provided by the module itself and the other by the decorative space armor. And the funny thing is, about using torpedo storage as decorative blocks means that, without really Intending it, it also has 222 torpedo space, as well as double frontal torpedo mounts. But yeah, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it instructive or at least inspirational enough for you to try it yourself. As for the last bit, enjoy a little engagement to see how it works in practice. It's been a while since I had a chance to actually make an Avorian video, so, so I hope this will keep you entertained until 2.0 hits. Or, if you want uh, me to do more of these sort of videos, well, just leave a like, leave a comment. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. This is Spazzy Dragon AK Syndromes. Fly safe.